Great, welcome to uh, today's Cloud Native SIG meeting. Really happy because we have um, Mauricio Santino today, uh, who's joined us to discuss um, some cloud events work. And welcome, Mauricio. Do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm super happy to be here and super happy to be a mentor again for Google Summer of Code. Uh, I've been, I was doing mentoring uh, way back when I was working at Red Hat. And I've been missing that for, for so long. And I think that just this mix between Jenkins, Exact, and Cloud Events, it's kind of like the perfect thing for, for me to come back and, and help here. So whatever I can do to help, I will be doing that. That is awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Vibhav, do you want to talk a bit, actually, because you're, you're here with um, Marcia, and do you, would you like to speak a bit about your ideas for the Cloud Events plugin and how that's evolved recently? In your work. I yeah, uh, so hey, Mauricio, yeah. thanks for like uh, joining. Uh, and uh, we'll definitely need like a lot of help uh, regarding some uh, cloud event specific uh, uh, subject matter expertise. And thanks for joining. So, uh, this the idea for the cloud events plugin we just ha had like out of the blue. And the first time I actually threw this idea against someone was uh, Oleg. And he said, okay, uh, this is a great idea. Probably we should do it. And then after that, we brought it up again in uh, the cloud events SIG, sorry, the cloud native SIG. And yeah, it's good to have you. So the idea for uh, the cloud events plugin was basically just be able to listen on cloud events, be able to trigger uh, Jenkins jobs on cloud events, and also uh, you know be able to emit cloud events for uh, Jenkins jobs, projects, or whatever events that are being created uh, by Jenkins and kind of uh, like uh, have it in the cloud events format instead of the uh, format that is there right now. There, there is a plugin called the Gatherer plugin, which we were looking at uh, uh, initially. And this plugin basically uh, kind of helps, uh, like kind of helps with the eventing and stuff. And uh, initially, we were thinking of like you know converting those uh, events which we see in the statistics gatherer plugins to like cloud events plugin. But uh, I was uh, doing some reading up yesterday, and I figured I, I was under the impression that discovery and subscription was already implemented for cloud events. So I don't think that's the case anymore. Uh, but uh, I was so. Do you do you have any idea like uh, about the discovery and subscription when it might get? Uh, uh, like so, started in the cloud and SDK. And and probably yeah. like what an idea of what you might have of how events should be uh, done in Jenkins. Yeah, so that's a very good question. So like the subscription and discovery, it's kind of like a work that it's starting. So I wouldn't rely on that that much for the, the scope of this project, right? So in general, what comes to my mind when you mention cloud events and Jenkins is exactly what you mentioned. So basically it's a plugin that it's going to emit events whenever you run things inside Jenkins and also an endpoint that it will be exposed for people to be able to submit cl cloud events to Jenkins itself. Hmm. I think that that's pretty much what it, like the scope of the work should be. And again, when I'm saying emitting events, that's usually sending a post request to a URL that you can configure. As hmm. soon as you provide that, we can hook that thing with other tools that hmm. are going to be able to deal with forwarding cloud events to our systems and doing all that stuff. So it is pretty simple. It's pretty well scoped. The only problem that you will have, and that's the problem that we are also trying to solve there in the CDF, is the format of the events and what events do you emit, right? Uh, we should try to avoid emitting Jenkins specific events because if you emit Jenkins specific events, then you are like tied to the Jenkins ecosystem. But if you emit like a standardized events, then you can interact with other tools, and that's basically mm -hmm. what we are trying to achieve there in the CDF. So. My proposal to you would be to start like experimenting with creating a plugin for Jenkins that basically emits cloud events and then also exposing an endpoint for consuming cloud events coming from other systems. And then we can focus on the format of the events themselves, right? Like you can start with a simple cloud event with not much data, making sure that you can emit the, these events uh, at the right times when, uh, when, uh, when, you know, when Jenkins triggered a job or when it finished. And then mm -hmm. figuring out what uh, information is available inside the jobs for being able to include that into the events. 
you need to kind of like figure it out what's kind of like the unique identifier for all the events that you're going to use uh, related to the jobs, right? Like you will need to correlate all these events that are related to the same kind of like pipeline execution. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of like where the, the, you know, the details becomes a little bit more tricky. That's why I would love to first kind of like see something like a plugin that it's emitting an event basically and mm -hmm. consuming an event. And then we can just go into the details of the data that we are going to include in each uh, different event that it's going to be emitted by Jenkins. Does that sound like a good plan or it's, is it too complicated? Yeah, this is actually the same thing I was thinking uh, of, uh, like starting off with uh, em emitting events, uh, like on events such as, you know, uh, starting a job or completion of a job, like these would be like good places to start. So the idea uh, where I got this from was basically Tekton has uh, uh, support for cloud events and uh, it, it kind of uh, MS cloud events in, a, in, in that way. So uh, in the design doc, you might have seen which I shared with you earlier. Uh, in that design doc, uh, you, you must have seen that there are these, uh, there is a table of cloud events which I've written and uh, should I sh uh, I'll just share it again, just in case. Would you like to share your screen? Oh. Yeah, I'll share my screen here. That'll be better. No, 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 no. Okay, so this is this is basically like uh, what. I came up with initially like how these events. Wait, wait, wait. These events we cannot things. see your screen. We can just. Oh, I cannot cannot see your screen. No, not not right now. Kira, do you see that? No, not yet. It just says you've started, but it's it's still black. It's probably loading. Okay. Yeah. Can you try to like Is stopping and one? sharing again? Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'm using another laptop right now, so it's not set up for Zoom. That's okay. No uh, worries. Cara, do you mind helping me out with this? Sure, I'll, I'll share. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, so there's a table at the very end, uh, which I want to talk about a little bit. Uh, so. Yeah, this this I this I this table I I uh, made based on the Tekton uh, cloud events table and what the resource looks like, the event uh, that happens on that resource, and th what the event type should look like. And this is the event type which would be emit uh, emitted like at every event. So if if a uh, so if a job is started, the event which emits. Uh, which is emitted the event type on that event would be okay the job is started and the data re regarding that job would be given so when you say that uh, you know those event the format should be uh, a bit more generic and not jenkins specific i i didn't understand uh, how yeah. uh, we could steer away from like being generic in any way good 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 so we are defining kind of like as part of the cd foundation these kind of like generic events for this exact same reason right like if you do this you emit these events tecton it's not going to be able to understand these events right because they have a different set of events so basically what we are creating is this shared language between these tools so they can exchange events and react based on different events i think that I don't want to confuse you with that right now. I think that mm -hmm. if you get this working, moving to emitting all the other generic events will be kind of like an easy thing to do. Or maybe it can mm -hmm. be a parallel plugin that we can create, right? Like it's going to be pretty similar, just the events format and the event types are going to be a little bit different, but it's the same mechanism. So as soon as you can emit events for now and listen to events, that's something okay. that I can see down there that it's listening for cloud events. I'm not entirely sure how are you going to do that. But as soon as you can do that, that's good, right? Like that's definitely like a starting point. So uh, it's better to, uh, so the point of this plugin is uh, kind of interoperability between different things. So I think if we start from the beginning to aim at uh, 
you know uh, supporting gendric events that would be that would be something good so uh, when you say that these uh, events they are not very they are not uh, generic types so what would what would a generic one look like do you have like an example which you could yes. share yeah i can send you a link so to some pull requests uh, that are, we are trying to manage right now in the cdf that are basically defining these events, but it's basically the same thing. But again, for example, the event type, it's not going to be io.jenkins. It's going mm. to be probably something CDF related, right? And probably we are not going to use the, the name job for it, which is kind of mm. like a Jenkins concept. It's going to be something like task or step or something like that, mm. or pipeline, for example, right? So it's kind of like the terminology, the vocabulary, and then the event types that it's, needs to be a little bit more generic. But again, as you as you might figure, right, like the content of the cloud events that you're emitting, like the way of emitting the events, it's going to be the same. So yeah. one of the th one of the things that I think that we can do as part of this project is also create, for example, the Java mappings, like the Java objects that are going to represent these generic events. Mm -hmm. So so then you can go to the plugin and add that dependency to that library, which is basically just defining the structure of these events. If that makes sense. Uh, can you repeat that line, please? Um, the Java mapping one. The last, the last part. Yeah. So, for example, right, like this is going to be. I'm guessing that this is going to be a Java object that it's going to be created inside the Jenkins plugin, and then we are going to use the Cloud Events SDK in Java to emit the events, yeah. basically. Right. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. As part of this project, what we can do is like instead of creating a, like a Java object inside the Jenkins plugin itself, we can create a separate jar file, a library that includes this kind of like uh, events definition. And then we can just definitely plug in the generic ones whenever we have them. We can also help building those generic events uh, while we are doing this project. Mm -hmm. Kind of modularity. Yes, yes, definitely. Most mostly because of that, like mm -hmm. the interoperability uh, idea there, that we would love to listen for cloud events, and we are not, we don't want to be restricted to just only listen for these events, right? For these mm -hmm. event types. So I wonder, I wonder if uh, you have already like a Git repository uh, or something that we can have discussions or maybe create issues in there. I think that that will be useful. Yeah. Uh, this so we uh, so we uh, started a bootstrap repo yesterday uh, let me uh, send it on the chat here if you can add it to the document that's good i mean so i can have that document as a reference yeah i'll add it to the document Uh, and I'll also give uh, edit rights to you, so you can uh, probably expand it based on what you feel like. Uh, can okay. I have your email ID? Yes, I will just put it here in the chat. OK. Have you seen, have you seen something already for listening for cloud events inside kind of like the plugin? Is that possible, exposing kind of like a REST endpoint? Uh, we haven't looked at the technical details, but it should be possible because uh, uh, I, I think the Prometheus plugin uh, works in a similar way. If I'm not GitHub, wrong. GitHub Webhook one is very similar. Yeah, uh, the Webhook trigger plugin, right? Uh, there's, there's also the, the, Git, the actual GitHub plugin as well, because that exposes so, the GitHub Webhook endpoint for listening. Makes sense. Yeah, it's pretty similar to that. So just exposing a REST endpoint where we can listen to events. And then we need to we will need to think about how to map events to do things inside Jenkins, right? Uh, but that's part of the definition, I guess, of the plugin. So what happens when I receive a cloud event? What do I do with it? And uh, what kind of events do I support? And which ones are not supported, for example? So when a cloud event comes by, uh, you should be able to uh, kind of put a cloud event trigger on a job, uh, which is listening on a specific cloud event. And once that cloud event comes by, 
uh, you should be able to trigger that job. Like if the uh, if it is listening on something like a tech on uh, com job completion, uh, like a task com task run completion, and uh, this cloud event is uh, the job is listening on this cloud event, uh, so the job will be triggered by that. So yep. that that is like the initial idea uh, for uh, implementation. Yeah. So good. and the and the main configuration for all this. Uh, the the only the question I have here is Gareth. Maybe uh, you can also help out with this. Is uh, where do we uh, do we keep all the uh, so all the information regarding what events we should listen on, like on the sources for the events in the global plugin configuration or. Uh, in the jobs, uh, this is one uh, doubt I have because uh, should it be global or should it be like localized to a job, basically? Are you talking about like a sort of a global allow list of events to filter on? Yeah, something like that. So, so I think if, if you if you wanted to do like yeah like like a a global we're only interest in these types of events. Then uh, yeah, global plugin configuration makes sense there. Um, you may also want to do it on a, on the job trigger as well to say, like I'm actually only interested in this particular type of event. So on the job trigger, I was thinking like we could reference back to the uh, global plugin con configuration uh, and choose from there. Uh, why I was thinking of doing in the global plugin configuration is. Uh, it it would be this is more of an admin thing you know like allowing uh, certain cloud events to get into the system reading certain cloud events and allowing certain projects to listen on certain cloud events otherwise oh, i don't know maybe i'm overthinking the security aspects of this of uh, what events could be listened on what you can't cannot listen on so that's why i was thinking if we should uh, Keep it like you know per job basis. Like on a job, the user can uh, define the source for the cloud events, and or should we do it on the global cloud? I can see there being a use in the at some point in the future for having the ability to filter out events of a particular type. Um, if you've got a like a bad actor in the system that's sending. Um, invalid events or something like that. You know, you may want an admin to filter something out for a period of time. That might be useful, but um, I think that's like a, a yeah future thing. So, Cara, I think you were going to say something. Then. Well, okay, these are just ideas. But one one thing you could do if you wanted to be able to control which events were going to be emitted from a certain pipeline, is you really could write um, a policy for that. I think that is actually a great use case for a policy in a, C, in a CD pipeline. And then in terms of what, who can, when you have like, okay, so these events are admitted and they're put in what, like a, a queue that people can subscribe to, like an information. Hmm. That is that pretty much how the system. So then you could, you could have permissions, right? On who listens to that, or is there, is there not a way to, to filter who has access mm -hmm. to what? Yeah, but that should be outside of Jenkins, right? So yeah. Jenkins shouldn't have control. So Sh Jenkins should just admit it mm. to an endpoint and forget about it, kind of. Yeah. We can then yeah. write some other components to deal with more complex things in there, but I wouldn't start with that. That's yeah. That goes into more complex. Yeah. Yeah. Mauricio, yeah, I think, have... I think... Go on. Go on. Yeah, sorry, you were saying? I, I was just wondering, I was asking about the work the event seg is doing and ha have you defined, um, have you been looking at how to define the data formats for the events? Is that already done or is that, is that an outstanding question? That's work in progress and I'm really pushing to merge a couple of like, I have five pull requests in there basically defining the vocabulary and there has been a lot of conversations about like the initial vocabulary. I'm hoping to be able to get that merged by Monday. And basically what will follow up from there, it's the definition of that vocabulary in cloud events terminology. Mm -hmm. So at least the metadata of the events should be there. And with that, we can already create, go and create, for example, a, like a Java model for those events. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have like a, a draft implementation in Go for a Go library. So that's where I am right now. And uh, unfortunately, I really need to have those pull requests merged to then move forward and create the cloud events definition. That's what I'm saying. It's not there yet, but if we start with just sending like the cloud events that uh, Vida, Vida, Vida is proposing right now, we can just uh, move forward with that, then swap the cloud events definitions later. Yep. That that does sound like a good place to start. Uh, and later on, we could uh, add a issue or like a story for extending the extending to CDF events. Yep. I th don't don't get me wrong. Defining the Jenkins specific events, I think that it's also a valid thing to do. Mm -hmm. Right. It is something valid. Uh, but for interoperability, I would just definitely go with the CDF event. So maybe the plugin is doing both, and you can select by configuration which events are emitted. Yeah, that does sound like a good idea. Like uh, that also gives us like some time uh, to kind of figure out like uh, you know the initial bits uh, without having to wait for the cloud event uh, or stuff to like wait for the events uh, CDF events to work itself out. So. Oh, but, so you were saying you've implemented a, a initial a library in Go for this one? Yeah, so basically what I've created is a small two things. This library that basically emits cloud events using Go. And I have, mm -hmm. because I've been working on the vocabulary, I've already implemented some of these cloud events. And then that library basically also provides you like a binary that you can use from the command line to emit the events. So mm -hmm. that's another possibility. So I'm not entirely sure the limitations from like building Jenkins plugin, but if you can call a binary from a Jenkins plugin, we can definitely use that. Or we can just create the same library in Java. That's, that shouldn't be a problem to be honest. It's not a big thing, just okay. time consuming. It's, it's basically like uh, probably you can use it to like uh, debug uh, a cloud events listener. Uh, so if it's emitting events, you could probably use it to uh, debug like a cloud events listener, which someone is writing. Because yes. uh, initially, uh, so Sagar was actually asking me earlier, like how should he get started on this and all. I suggested that uh, he uh, he first like try to emit events uh, out of the Jenkins plugin, and then. Uh, and then kind of uh, move ahead from there. And I am not sure how the listening part will work because even I have to read up on how the webhook trigger plugin works and stuff. So, but it it could probably be similar. Thing. So. Yeah, there is there is one project in in the K native uh, community that basically I think that it's called SOCI or something like that that basically allows you to define that project as a sync for the events, and you can graphically mm -hmm. see the events that are arriving there. So basically, what you start that tool. Okay. Sock I, I think. Let me find it for you. I will just look for it and paste it here in the chat. Yeah, I've just pasted there. So basically, yeah, I think that it's just a simple uh, user interface that allows you to receive cloud events and see them kind of like while they are arriving. It is in Go. So that mm. might not be the best thing, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think that if you are planning to see and try to debug what's happening inside mm -hmm. the plugins and see what are the events that are being emitted, using something like that might help. Yeah, this is this is this would actually be uh, very nice for debugging. Mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna put this down in the uh, design doc as well. Then. Also, one thing, if 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 I can mention something, uh, is there any way to get like a Jenkins instance in the cloud where we can put this plugin? Uh, we can. Uh, so we can. Uh, spin up Jenkins probably in a mini cube or something, or like uh, 
while testing so when we are testing the plugin uh, we usually use mvn hpi run that's what i use for running the plugin locally with a jenkins instance and uh, then jenkins runs with just the plugin installed and you can test the plugin from there yep is does that answer your question uh yeah yeah i was thinking more like on provisioning it somewhere in the cloud i'm not sure if cloud is can provide us that but yeah, I, mean, I think that like as soon as we can run it locally i think it's fine for now but then if we want mm -hmm. to connect different tools uh, it might be better to run it like in a in a cloud provider or something but that's fine i mean we can definitely leave that for later when we get to the for point i was just going to say when we get to the point where we we do need that i i can ask okay what are we going to say yeah that's good Sorry, I interrupted you, Vivab. No, like uh, I was just I was just asking for debugging purposes because I was uh, I was thinking like uh, like I've never used Jenkins directly from the cloud or like debug. Max I've done is like uh, my Jenkins would run in an OpenShift cluster and we would and uh, to test it against the OpenShift API, we would have to. Uh, <laughs> Load the uh, we had to load the plugin into the volume and then uh, restart the Jenkins uh, uh, container and then you know go ahead from there and test it. Yeah, it's it's a one minute it's it's a one minute uh, task, but that one minute is long because because Jenkins takes a long time to restart. So so uh, I, I recently I figured out that uh, working locally is uh, much easier in that way. Because uh, Jenkins takes a uh, a lot less time to start, and you can you can easily iterate on uh, your code. Then, but probably we'll figure it out. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, do we have enough uh, for getting started with that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, what do you say, Kai? Yeah, I think this has been great. I really wanted you two to meet and, and to start a uh, great in the project. So this has been really successful. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. So now you have my email. Feel free to write me like to my private email and uh, send me the links for GitHub. If you add that to the, the repository, if you want to have like a weekly catch up, that will be good just to see how it's start going. Uh, but no pressure, right? Like you, you have your times. Whenever you make some progress, let me know. I, yeah, I will keep, keep you posted. I'm going to keep sending you messages. And Perfect. I'm going to drop you a lot because uh, cloud events is something that is uh, that is very cool to see uh, that this is a, such kind of uh, standardization is happening. And it's it's really nice to see like different tools coming together. And I, and it's just, it's it's great. So, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Feel free to again. Feel free to ping me anytime, and I will definitely keep you updated about the the generic events uh, progress. If I make substantial progress, I will let you know, and I will try to push you into that direction whenever those things are ready, not before. Yes, definitely. That uh, that would be nice. Thanks, Maurice. Great. Man. No worries. A pleasure. Thank you, Cara, for the introduction. Yep. And Great. Thank you for being here. Great meeting. Um, excellent. Uh, any other outstanding questions before we go or issues, topics to discuss? Currently, I, mm -hmm. yeah, Sagar. So um, currently, um, today I was dealing with cloud events on how to send it through HTT server to catch up it on the another um, local host port. So, um, it is maybe a coding related stuff. So maybe I will, um, should I ask now or like it's just the coding related stuff? Like, yeah, oh. feel free. Feel free to ask it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, just a second. Mm. Let me share the link. Um. Mm.
Yeah. Uh, can I share a screen just to show that, like, it's just a snippet of code? Please, yeah. I, I think you should be able to. Yeah. Okay. So, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Uh, so like here, um, I made a HTTPS server. So started a server on localhost 8080 and, uh, I read the do calls over Java SDK. So here it's making a cloud events and then attach and here it's making the HTTP L, uh, URL collection, but, um, I don't know exactly what here, this line of code doing actually, and I read the do call. So. So um, I'm unable to understand completely like how this is writing, what it is actually doing, if you know, guys. Yeah, I think that that's encoding the payload of the cloud event into a binary format. So you don't really need to worry about that. Like, so for example, there, like with data, you are including a JSON payload in mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. those that's basically uh, codified into like a binary format when it's sent through the wire. So. That's something that you need to do to avoid issues with encoding, basically. So you can send the same kind of like a string to a different platform. If you're sending from Linux to Mac or to Windows, they should mm -hmm. all be able to get that binary thing that it's compressed and decompress that and then just get the same text. That's oh. why you're doing that. Okay. okay. If that's kind of like what the documentation said, you just need to do it and it should work like that. Right? That's fine. Okay. Okay. And this is just then, um, using that same, um, encoding to read that, is it? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Cool. You are not sending, are you sending there? Like the, the message? No, like currently it's just like, um, it's from the, um, um, example, basic HTTPS from cloud events. So it's just like catching the local, um, so in order to send it through HTTPS connection, should I need to serialize it with JSON and then I need to send it and then converting it back into cloud events, is it? I think that that's correct, right? Like if you want to send it via HTTP, you need to create, so basically the cloud events SDK, it's going to give you some helpers to create uh, like the HTTP representation for that because some of these attributes, for example, with source or the ID of the cloud event is going to go into the HTTP headers and the mm -hmm. data it's going to be into the body of the request. So as far as I remember the cloud events Java SDK, they will give you these helpers to create an HTTP request that then mm -hmm. basically you just need to send using a library. Okay, so is it like, so it's like kind of I'm um, using the Jackson that they are showing me to deserialize and then um, with their helper classes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. Okay. They, they are going to probably use Jackson for for doing that. So, and mm -hmm. and just then doing a post request and just catching it on the another maybe local host um, 1990 from 88 and just to then um, test it to sending a post and right. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah that's oh. correct okay okay and then where this is using like after creating it into binary like some encoding is done into this object right um yes that's correct uh so probably for for json if you are sending json data you don't really need to do the write to binary but let's mm -hmm. check the documentation let me check that because it really depends on on the format that you want to use to send the payload of the cloud event if it's binary, mm -hmm. if it's just JSON. Okay. So cloud events SDK. There it is. Um, so here is the basic HTTPS example they are showing, sending mm -hmm. in this cloud events. Um, yep. Yeah. So if you, yeah, a standard client, let's just take a look at that, like HTTP client with HTTP URL connection. Mm -hmm. at the bottom of the page yeah some yeah, one of these links that's the same file that i showed you mm -hmm. oh okay that's the same one okay perfect yeah so the first one is basically just encoding it and just showing that you can just read send and read the same thing right mm -hmm. and if you if you scroll down there is nothing else in there no right yeah no that's just, just uh, the, the helpers yeah okay let me see if i can find it 
I know that I've seen some examples that just shows uh, more advanced usage. So for mm -hmm. example, this one. Uh, is there any, like, I'm not entirely sure about Jenkins, but I'm pretty sure you cannot use like a Spring Boot in there, right? Or the Spring Library. I also don't know. Probably no, I don't think so. But okay. it is, yeah, it doesn't quite, yeah. Like restrictions on the libraries that can be used inside Jenkins for sending this, but there will be something there to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, and mm -hmm. even in conference, they also said you can't, I, I don't know um, if I heard wrong, but I'm just confirming. They said you can't subscribe to a cloud events in basic studio, but you can do on a spring using spring. Um, I don't know. No. No, I think that you can code that definitely, right? Like you can definitely subscribe to, not subscribe, you can listen to cloud events, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That uh, That's again, uh, that's just exposing a normal REST endpoint. It's like, it's <laughs> nothing specific to the cloud event because at the end of the day, you're going to get an HTTP request mm -hmm. that have a cloud event inside it, right? So the yeah. only thing that you need to do from the HTTP request, you need to parse it and mm -hmm. put it kind of like inside the cloud event class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, got it. I, I think that this, for example, this example here, let me put it in the chat, is something that you might want to look into. Uh, it's there as well. Uh, and um, basically it's just sending the, the, the request to oh. another server okay. using HTTP exchange. And that's okay. basically what I was mentioning before. It's just basically getting the cloud event Mm -hmm. and creating kind of like creating an HTTP request for it. But yeah, definitely the examples are not the best, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And this is because it's very kind of like low level Java. It's like Java with no libraries at all, right? And yeah, I think that's why they, they look more complicated. Yeah, they are using like Sun libraries, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Okay, yeah. so got it. Like uh, now, I will just make a um, HTTPS request, um, serialize, and just trying to pass and just make a demo of it. That yeah. would be great. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Um, how can I open? No worries. Hmm. How is it? Where is it? Um, Arana, you can take the um, um, sharing access. Um, I'm just figuring out how to get that. Okay. And that override you. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you, are, are you part of the uh, cloud events, say, getter channel by any chance? The cloud events, sorry, what? The cloud, the cloud native, say, getter channel by any chance uh, for Jenkins? Mm, probably not. I will send you okay. the link. Yeah, it'll be it'll be nice if you could join because I, I have I have a feeling we're gonna get a lot more questions uh, uh, about cloud. Good. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. And, oh, like, that's the Okay, yeah. Awesome. Here. yeah. And is there is any Slack channel or group community for the cloud events as we who are actually using it in their project, like integrating? Um, um, that's a good question. So yes, so there is like a channel for cloud events themselves. Mm -hmm. And let me figure out where was that? That's that's definitely in the CNCF Slack uh, organization. Yeah, Slack channel, it's, but that's quite in um, currently. Uh, is is the, there a specific channel for uh, cloud uh, Java cloud events SDK? Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. I, I think guess. that no, I think that cloud events SDK, it's the group, it's the main channel where you can ask questions. And they, like the maintainers for the cloud events SDKs are, are quite like at least the Java ones, they are quite responsive. So if you have any problems with the SDK itself, mm -hmm. uh, we can definitely send a pull request and, and engage in conversations there. Okay. That's awesome. Oh, I can see you Sagar there. Yeah, you are there. Yeah. Is is that you? Yeah. 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 Sagar, uh, Sagar, you posted some questions yesterday, no? Mm -hmm. uh, in the cloud event, slide. Yeah. 
yeah it just like regarding listening yeah, like, them yeah that's i think that you're not getting any 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 answers there because the question itself it's a little bit tricky you don't really need to do anything besides exposing a rest endpoint or opening a message queue or whatever you need to do to listen that it's not mm -hmm. cloud event specific right mm -hmm. so you can listen to cloud events in any way you want and then you need to transform whatever you're getting into a cloud event if that makes okay. sense hopefully that makes yeah. sense but i totally understand if it doesn't at the beginning okay. yeah it's just like parsing of that in mm -hmm. again uh, cloud events is a format it's not the thing like you can take data and like put it in a cloud events format and pass it around it's like a river of uh, cloud events data where you're just like pouring your juice into so it's just go going as a cloud event so yeah it yep. it it can it can be tricky to understand that standard standardization bit initially i think mm -hmm. i have seen one json format like that what exactly was you are saying i just go to that like just uh, some new attributes to specify um, the cloud event yeah um in that case in that case Folks, I know that you're in Gitter and I will join the Gitter channel at some point, but I'm definitely on Slack. So if you don't see me there, just ping me there in Slack. I'm definitely in the CNCF and in the CDF Slack channels. Uh, that might be the fastest way to contact me or via email, right? Like if you send me an email, I'm, I'm going to answer there for sure. Okay. I have too many chats already, but There's I will also try definitely to join Gitter. There's also the CDF um, GSOC channel. That's always, I mean, if you want to ask your questions more publicly, like that, that can be helpful to other people. That's a good one. Yep. Or I guess the CDF events channel. Um, and can you invite me to that channel, Kar? Kar? Can uh, you invite, invite me to the. You should, I, I think it's open if you're in the CDF. Um, or I'll, I'll send you a link. Yeah, yeah. I will try to join now. Okay. Are you in the, C yeah, you're in the CDF one. Okay. Yeah. I am, I am. Okay, awesome. Uh, those channels. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there. Good stuff. Good. Awesome meeting. We're basically at time. Thank you all so much for being here today. This was really interesting and informative. So thank you. Thank you very much. Take care, thank everyone. You. Let's keep talking.